everyone, and welcome to our monthly get together, the lymphedema. No, 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 Brenda, the lipedema <laughs> patient roundtable. Clearly, there are some cobwebs up here, and actually, we've got so many different things going on right before we went live. We want to fill you all in, but we know that you are logging on right now, and we just want you to get cozied up, get something to drink. Let us know that you are in chat and we want you to enjoy some stimulating conversation tonight. We've got so many things going on and I know a lot of you are logging on and saying, wait a minute, is this a throwback night? Because we've got Cheryl Skolage here from Lipedema and Food Sensitivities. She is one of the founding panelists of the Lipedema Patient Roundtable. She is standing in, sitting in for Jenny Bojean tonight. And we're really super excited to have you with us, Cheryl, for so many reasons. You always add such value and you're literally a PhD when it comes to what you know about lipedema. And your backdrop says it all tonight, the Ellers, Ellers Danlos Society. It's Ellers Danlos Awareness Month. We're going to be talking about that a little bit tonight. And you know what? We've got chat already starting to everybody out there in chat. I know that you want to do full disclosure and you were concerned about being with us because of blinking eyes. Why don't we get that out there just so everybody doesn't wonder what's happening with Cheryl's eyes? Sure. Um, so uh, about the time that I dropped out of the, the panelists last year, um, I started having uncontrolled blinking and I was finally diagnosed last September. Um, so the official name is blepharospasms or blepharospasm, something along those lines. Um, it, so probably my eyes are going to be closed a lot of the time. <laughs> um, my, the treatment is actually Botox injections around the eyes um, and it has to occur every three months. They have no idea if the treatment will work or not for that three month period. The last three months, it really didn't work. My next treatment is Friday. Woohoo! So we'll see if it works this coming time. Well, we thank you for pressing through the situation and being here with us tonight. We are going to talk about Ellers Danlos. I want to say, first of all, to, to everyone from sweet, wonderful Carol Moody to Patricia Broderick, Sue Kaminsky, Megan Fru, Nita Kluis, of course, Michael Turner's there blowing kisses to his lippy butterfly, N Mary Coleman, and gosh, Casey Grosvenor had surgery recently, and yet she, here she is still supporting and being a part of our wonderful chat tonight. Chatters, you make this round table so special. Thank you for showing up. Chat away. If you have any questions about anything we're discussing, put them in the Q&A. And before I do anything else, and the reason I was a little flustered when we first began, as you know, we had promoted that Dr. Molly Slay would be our special guest, and she was so looking forward to being with us. I was going to couch it as a personal matter arose, but she actually asked me to disclose to all of you. And she is fine. Let me say that up front. She is fine. But in the hospital in which she works, there was an active shooter today. She spent over an hour in a dark closet fearing for her life. And she has been traumatized. In her text, she said, please tell everyone that I'm so sorry that I cannot show up and be with you tonight. And of course, we all absolutely understand we are sending her our heartfelt prayers for everyone in the situation to my knowledge no one has been injured but just the terrifying experience itself is so sobering and so here it is mental health awareness month we planned on discussing that as well tonight and we always are here to support each other's mental health that's why lympha press started this three years ago because we cared about not just supplying a pump to people but helping them in their journey community helps to do that so we band together tonight as we always do sending love and prayers to molly who will be with us again soon and thankfully she is safe and that is all that i can say at this point but yeah i was a little shaken up to get the news and i think our panelists all agree that this is not, you know, a hospital should be a safe place of all things. And so, um, yeah, that's, 
that's for real stuff. And so with that, I will try to gracefully move through our regular introductions, but we're all just feeling it a little bit tonight. You know, we're just feeling it. And that's good and right. These are things that shouldn't just be glossed over. We have so, we're so honored and blessed always to have Linda Ann Kahn with us, who never fails to bring important cutting edge information. And you are studying amazing things. You're also going to be doing a webinar for Lympha Press next month as part of Lipedema Awareness Month. And for those of you who weren't able to be at FDRS, and she only had 15 minutes at FDRS, we're giving her a whole hour and Q&A. Tell everybody what your topic is, Linda Ann. Well, this is so exciting because I've been studying this for about two years now, the, the importance of the vagus nerve on the parasympathetic nervous system. And God knows right now our sympathetic nervous system just went out of whack hearing the news by you about Molly's hospital. But we need to be in parasympathetic state because otherwise our adrenalines just go, go, go all the time. And when you're in sympathetic state all the time, that's not good for your entire body. And so what I'm going to speak about and what I did at FDRS, but now I've got much longer, is the importance of the vagus nerve on the whole nervous system and exercises that you can do to tone the vagus nerve. We talk about toning. And when you tone the vagus nerve, you actually calm your, your sympathetic nervous system down that your parasympathetic comes up. Um, and then also the fascia is very important because the fascia is the scaffolding in your body that holds everything together. And it's a sensory organ. And storing in the fascia is trauma and stress that has built up over years and years and years of injuries or trauma just from our illness, from this illness and going to the doctor can be traumatic. And so I'm going to talk about that and the role of the fascia and how it ties in with the, with the vagus, the vagus nerve. And then that ties in with the heart and heart math and heart rate variability and the brain. And there is this direct connection between the gut and the brain. So stay tuned. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to, uh, right now, I'm just putting in chat. So go to the Lympha Press link tree and you can sign up for Linda Ann's webinar. Also, earlier in the month, Dr. Karen Herbst is going to do an expanded version of her FDRS speech on compartment syndrome. Here's what makes it unique. The webinar is extra special because it is live. Linda Ann gets way more than 15 minutes and you can do Q&A and participate just like you do at the round tables in chat. So these are going to be really vibrant discussions. And I also posted in there, some of you weren't able to attend FDRS and I felt inclined to do my settling your worth talk. And I'm going to do that in July as sort of a birthday present to everybody because I turned 60 in July and I want to make it available to everybody. So that's my link tree that's in the chat there as well. And Linda Ann, we're just so honored and excited that you're going to participate. There's other things you've been learning, but I want to go around the table here too, because Tail Ginger Pear, thank you for being here tonight. You Sometimes I wonder, is she going to make it? And you made it. So I'm so thrilled. You sent us, it was one of those days. Yeah, it was one of those days. I crazy work, house full of teenagers that I made move furniture and then jumped in the shower and literally <laughs> went here. Here I am. <laughs> uh, well, we're glad you're here. And you <laughs> sent us all uh, in our chat. We have a Lippies of the Round Table chat where we prepare for the show every month. And we want to make sure that we all make sure we cover the topics that you want to talk about. And she, recently posted about getting a test for inflammation, which was really progress. Why don't you tell us about that, Libby? I, PGP. <laughs> so um, I actually have a PCP right now that believes me and listens to me and is 
kind of excited to do these weird tests that I want to do. And I think he's also trying to prove that not all doctors are fat phobic. I think he's really trying to like win me over. Um, but he, I told him a little bit about the um, MRT raw test that I'm doing with a dietitian. And he was like, well, let's do this testing and this testing. And so we did um, the CR reactive or C reactive protein blood work and it was elevated. And we did a SED, I don't know if it's said or if it's SED um, blood work, and it was elevated like almost like 20 points higher than what it should be. Um, so two of the inflammatory testing that we did was high. And this is like after I've had seven surgeries, removed a ton of lipedema, I do the vibration plate, I do the lymphopress, I do the rebounder, I wear the compression, I'm right now I'm living off of potatoes and sausage, which is, or potatoes and pork, which is my two lowest inflammatory foods on the one test that we did um, to kind of clean my system back out. And this is still showing high inflammatory responses. So after I posted that in our group chat, he actually called me today and was all excited. He was like, you probably already looked in the app, but your results are back and they are like raised. You do still have, he was like all excited. And he was like, so I've already talked to my boss and my friend who's like an allergist and we're seeing what we should do next for you. And I want you to get in with an allergist and we want to do this. And he was like, oh, you're coming in tomorrow for blood work, he, for a blood pressure test. He was like, I'll talk to you then. But like, He's so excited to figure out the next step with these like inflammatory markers and elevation in my blood work. Like it's exciting to kind of, you know, hear a doctor that's like, you're right. Like you do have inflammation. <laughs> this is so, yeah. It's, wow. It's, well, and you know, to have... Just to see the way your face lit up, it wasn't about the test results. It was about feeling heard and seen. Yeah. It's nice to have proof that it's like, oh yeah, she's not just fat and lazy who eats all day. Like she barely eats. She's super active. She's had all these surgeries for this. Like she actually knows her body. And he told me that at my appointment a week or two ago, he said, he was like, I don't mind like when you come in armed and ready to go, because I know, you know, your body. And like, you're telling me out of a place of like, this is what needs done. And I was like, well, you don't need to tell fat people that we're fat. Like we're aware of it more than anybody. Like we dress <laughs> it, we lug it around, we wash it, we see it every day. Like we're aware. By the time you're telling us we're fat, somebody else has already told us. And like, we know diet and exercise is an option. Like we're not, we're not stupid. Like we don't get to 41, never hearing of diet or exercise. I mean, that would be amazing, but it doesn't happen that way. And he was like, no, no, I get it. He was like, it's just, it's refreshing. He said it was like refreshing to have like a patient that like wants to like actually learn her body and like do what's best for it and not just follow every, you know, little fad thing that could be out there. So it was a nice talk. It's, I actually enjoy, you know, talking to him versus like mm -hmm. the other doctors where it's like, what are they going to tell me now? But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Dr. Herbst last year did a webinar, Pulling the Fire Within, which was all about inflammation. If any of you missed any of our archived webinars, they live on the Lymphopress website. So Linda Ann, hearing what Pale Ginger Pear is saying about what her doctor said and what her test showed, anything come to mind that you want to add? Well, the first thing that I was thinking of, did you have, have you had your hormone panel taken? Because we know that estrogen is a driver, you know, of the inflammation and of lipedema. So I would check the hormones as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we know this is an inflammatory disease. And I love that one, cooling the fire within. I actually always send that to my patients to listen to. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, of course, there's anti-inflammatory foods. So when you did your did the test with the food sensitivity, did some of the foods that you eat a lot come up on the test? Um, the one that came up the most was corn. And I didn't realize how much corn I ate until 
I was looking at it and I was like, oh yeah, being gluten-free, I eat corn checks, corn tortillas, corn chips, kicks. Like I eat a lot of corn, like, because I can't have the wheat stuff. So I didn't realize how much corn products I was eating until I was like, oh, I have to look for it. So that might make a big difference when you avoid that because that's inflammatory. Well, I stopped corn about yeah. two and a half weeks ago and I feel yeah. like insanely better already from it right. and like see a difference like in my abdomen area, like my one pair of shorts doesn't, don't even want to stay up anymore, like they keep mm. sliding. Um, so I can definitely see a difference and feel a difference when I've cut out like the corn. Um, there's some stuff that show up that like tea was another high one and I don't drink tea at all. Hmm. Um, so it's weird some of the stuff that like shows up that it's like I have never had that or it's been years and years um but yeah okay so there's a lot of interest in chat about this Kara have you had ANA blood work Francine Schwartz wants to know I have no idea <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so and I'm I'm not like Susie and some of the others that know all of the I just he's like let's do this blood work I'm like okay <laughs> like I here's my arm can we you know um, but I am getting a printout of all my labs when I go tomorrow and I will then have him write like which each blood work is what the reason that he ordered it so that like I can explain it better and we'll do a write up about it and all of that because as of right now I, I just he agreed to run these tests and I was like okay sure let's do it like I, I I tell you, I, I'm very often the same way. It's just like, just do whatever you think needs to happen and let me know what I need to know. But there are people that really want more detail. Uh, they want to find out what you find out, yeah. Tara, as you go forward and listing the inflammatory markers that are suggested. Uh, Rhonda Daly says she knows about CRP and estrogen. Anything that you could add to that, Linda Ann, perhaps, or Susie? Yeah. There's, and sorry, there's another one called CH50. And then the ANA is a marker of um, autoimmune. They usually test that if they think you might have Sjogren's, but it's also autoimmune. The other one is CH50. Mm. Okay. And I, I'm sure- and homocysteine. Homocysteine levels. Would this also, would this evaluation help to identify if Kara's also dealing with mast cell? I don't think so. Well, we don't, we're, we're I mean, gonna, I, I think I have mast cell because I react to a lot of stuff and like, I'll hold like a plastic bag on my arm and I'll get the welts and the reaction. And like, I feel like I have, or I'll eat something and I'll get like the itchy hive kind of response. Mm. So, I mean, I would not be shocked <laughs> if it right. comes up that I have it. Gotcha. Um, I just never think to ask about it because yeah. there's always a thousand other things to ask about. Sure. Um, I know he was doing a like a retest of for my thyroid to double check, um, but uh, he was like very supportive of everything. Like I even asked him like if he felt that I wanted to see what his response would be, um, and I asked him if he felt like I should do or look into any of those, you know, weight loss drugs that are out right now or that are being used for weight loss or whatever. And he was like, I honestly don't know if your body would react. He was like, I know like because I was showing him some of the examples and studies and stuff like that. And he's like, he was like, you've gotten a rid of a lot of your lipedema or like most of it, the way you talk. He was like, I don't know if you would react. He's like, cause I still don't think you eat enough mm. to get a response from it. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I think you should focus on figuring out the foods that are going to make you sick and get into eating and eating enough before you focus on like getting rid of the fat to get rid of the fat. And so like, I loved that his answer was about getting me foods that were making me healthy and not sick versus like, yes, let's get you on this injection and get this weight wow. off. Of you. Very, very good point. Yeah. For those of you who may be new to the round table, we might be using terms that you've never heard of before. And for that, we apologize. Don't be afraid to put in the Q and A, what are you talking about? What is mast cell? What is this? What is that? There are often linked conditions that can follow, for instance, loose connective tissue disorders like Ehlers-Danlos. Now, Patty, you also 
are quite familiar with Ellers Danlos. Dan, I always say it wrong. Ellers Danlos. Yeah, um, mine is the hypermobility. So I've got to be very mindful of knees and ankles. And before menopause, it was just something I kind of was mindful of. And since menopause, it's really kind of kicked in. And my symptoms, my lipedema symptoms have spiked more. So like my walking has taken a big hit since that. Mm -hmm. And the, the knee is constantly, it doesn't feel like I have something wrong with my knee. It's more the ligament that goes over my knee. That is my issue. So that's the things that I look on. It, I see a lot of nodding around the panel and also a mention in chat that Durkham's is one of those other conditions that is often related to this community. Who else on the panel here has Ehlers-Danlos? Okay. For mobility, I wasn't given like the official Ehlers-Danlos or gotcha. diagnosis, but Dr. Arp said I'm definitely hypermobile and I have one knee that wants to pop out all the time. Okay. So it is awareness month. And <laughs> those of you like, so, and by the way, we noticed your t-shirt lippy butterfly from last year's FDRS conference. Patty Cornute gave a wonderful talk and it was all about the circus and she was the ringleader, but we all had different t-shirts that talked about different roles in the circus. So contortionist, interesting because of hypermobility, that really does sort of go along with the theme. How does this impact your life, Angelique? Well, really, I think that um, not knowing anything about Ehlers downloads um, when I lost my mobility, I think that that actually contributed to it. Um, I can't go a day without taking a step that like locks my knee. Um, but I'm also noticing like little things that I've done my entire life to try to um, make up for this, this, this thing that happens with me. One, like I have to tuck my arms in order to go to sleep because if I go to sleep with my elbow completely out, it's gonna lock all the way up. Um, if I go to sleep on my back and my leg is straight out, I know for certain that at a certain point it's going to be extremely painful and I'm not going to be able to bend my knee in order to get it out. Poor Michael has had to help me bend my knee a couple of times. But it's something that I, I, I spoke to a lady um, off of the screen and stuff about this um, this past month. And I was telling her, it's something that I'm still like rather new to understanding. But it's something that I realized that I've made adjustments for my entire life. And I'm worried now approaching 41 um, I see signs of perimenopause popping in there, and I'm worried that it's going to increase as menopause comes on and things like that. So, Linda Ann, do you have any insight about that? Well, as you all know, and as Paddy knows, you have to be really careful when you do have Ellis Danslos hypermobility syndrome. And there was a patient that I have who kept getting injured, but it didn't click she'd come to me for lymphedema mm -hmm. and then she got injured doing Pilates and I had referred her for Pilates. And then I said, you need to check. I think you have Ellis dance loss and she does. And it was just as well because then she was pregnant. And when you're pregnant, you need to be very careful in the last trimester because of the laxity of the, of the tendons. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. You just have to be really careful. Of course, there's gut issues that come with Ellis Dan's loss. But they can come with lipedema too. And most of the Durkham's patients have Ellis Dan's loss. So Susie, you definitely have personal information about this. Talk to us about, because especially when she was saying pregnancy, you were nodding your head. Oh yeah. I mean, I've had four babies and uh, pretty decent sized ones. And my last one, it was really interesting because I absolutely had to wear a belt and the amount, the only way to describe it is that I couldn't hold him properly in position for that last trimester properly. And my doctor actually, and I wasn't diagnosed. I didn't know I had Ehlers-Danlos. I didn't know I had lipedema, but my doctor was like, you actually cannot have any more babies. Like this shop needs to be closed because you're at such risk 
already. And I had to wear the support belt through the whole thing. And, and it was a very difficult delivery. And actually the one that I had before that, um, she, when she was coming out because of the laxity and the inability of my body to hold everything the way it should be, um, she almost ended up breaking a, um, a shoulder collarbone. And they had to intervene at the delivery stage, which was a little traumatizing for me. Um, I had them all naturally, but it was just, it was, it was a bit brutal and it wasn't, and it wasn't easy. The other thing is, is I don't know how many times I've rolled my ankles and gone down like a complete moron in the wow. most awkward situations. Oh, just sprained ankles. Look at Angelique's nodding too. Sprained ankles for days. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that, I'm so sorry. That's something that my mom had brought up to the doctors when I was like a toddler, when I was a preteen during my teenage years, because throughout my school time, it, every week I was spraining my ankle, I would take a step, it would roll, I would take a step and it would roll. And eventually that's what ended up breaking my ankle that, you know, led me into the nursing home for those two years. But the ankle had always been weak and no doctor ever once said like, maybe there's something going on here. It was always because I was fat. Yeah. For me, it was always that I was a bit clumsy, a little bit awkward. And I would just ditch PE or any of the sports things because I was just destined to be just destroyed. And I was like, I am not, I have the bent, you know, the knees where like, they kind of go a little bit backwards, but also the arm thing. I hadn't thought about that till you described it, Angelique, but I have to be really careful how I sleep. Like I can't even be comfortable. <laughs> my blur. I can't even get comfortable at night because it hurts so badly if I leave my arm out for any length of time um, flat, like on the bed. Wow. So, and some people, the their fingers go out, the wrists, the yeah. fingers. Yeah. And of course, we can make our arms go all the way over. That's right. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's like, I am more, you know, we've talked about this before, but I feel like I'm learning it in a technicolor way tonight. And of course, we always marveled at Cheryl's amazing jewelry are you wearing it, jewelry? It, and i didn't put them on today in that horrible i i should have so <laughs> especially one, for ellers danlis awareness for, for our new friends out there who may not be familiar with cheryl she would use her hands to talk and she would have these really cool like badass jewelry <laughs> rings on their, her hands and we just thought it was fashion but instead <laughs> tell us about that yeah, uh, so the the rings are actually splints um, because a lot of my Ellers Danlos is in my fingers, um, especially the thumb um, and the spine. So mine tends to be a, a lot in in that area. Although Angelique, you are so right about the knee. My knee is bending backwards, and it's a pain in the butt to sleep right now. <laughs> wow. But anyway. <laughs> um, but um, there's something called um, silver uh, finger splints um, that you can purchase um, at various companies. But there's also a YouTube video that shows you how to make them. And when I went to the hand therapist, they weren't really excited about buying silver splints for me. So I ended up making them and it ended up being a lot cheaper. So, you know, in the long run, the silver lining was there. So, yay. Um, but um, but one of the things that uh, they check for when they do the evaluation for Ehlers-Danlos, uh, they'll check your pinky to see how far backwards it'll bend. Um, and they'll also check your thumb. Um, so they'll check both pinkies, both thumbs, um, the elbows, the knees, and if you can touch your palms to the floor without bending your knees. So that's the first criteria that you need to pass. Um, and then after that, there's an additional checklist. And we do have that checklist available on my food sensitivities uh, Facebook group. Um, so if you check for lipedema and food sensitivities in Facebook, mm -hmm. you can come over to our group and uh, we have uh, information about lipedema organized into guides. So you can take a look and learn all about lipedema. There's a section on Ehlers-Danlos in there with the checklist and all that great stuff. Um, 
uh, I just saw someone's asking who diagnoses. Um, I originally went, well, I originally self-diagnosed myself. Um, I saw a TV show called Mystery Diagnosis. Um, and it, there's a whole backstory to that. But anyway, I ended up going to a rheumatologist and he fought me the whole freaking appointment saying there's no way that you can have it. It's a rare disease, um, which a side note is kind of interesting because the math doesn't seem to add up because Ehlers-Danlos is a rare disease and lipedema is said to just be rarely diagnosed. But lipedema is supposed to be 10% of the population and there's supposed to be a large number of lipedema women with Ehlers-Danlos. So how is Ehlers-Danlos rare? But anyway, getting back to it. <laughs> so the rheumatologist uh, fought me like the whole time. And uh, like, like I was trying to go through, you know, the whole list, easy bruising. I said, well, even when my cat walks on me, I get bruised. He said, well, you must have a fat cat. Thanks, that was useful, awesome. It, I mean, the whole time. So at the very end, he says, well, all right, let's see. And, and so he went through, you know, can you bend your, your pinky? Can you bend your thumb? He went, oh. It, and I just remember him, it, he just kept playing with my arm and seeing how much it would flop. <laughs> and he goes, well, yeah, you have some type of Ehlers Danlos, but it doesn't really matter what kind because you're old, you're 45, so you're not gonna have kids. So it doesn't really matter what kind, but yeah. yeah. And he sent me on my way. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so this past, uh, in 2018, they came up with a new checklist. Um, you're supposed to be able to bring it to your GP and they're supposed to go through the checklist and uh, evaluate whether you have it or not. Somehow, I don't know how, I ended up getting into with a geneticist and they went through the checklist. And so I was re-diagnosed this past year as well. Wow. And I just wanted to say that for Ellis Danslos hypermobility syndrome, which is what is in the lipidema and the Durkheim's world, there is no genetic test. But Correct. there are genetic tests for the prolapse type and the other types. And some of the patients may have prolapse as well as the hypermobility. But the hypermobility Ellis Danslos is a clinical diagnosis. Thank you for clarifying that. That's really interesting. I, a lot of people, when you were saying what some of the markers were, I was wondering how many people at home were actually doing the, the tests to see if, if, if they have it. I really admire all that's happening in chat here. And we also have a question for you, Linda Ann, from Cynthia Mason. She wants to know if there is a correlation between high homocysteine levels and lipedema. And if so, is there a recommended treatment? Well, the homocysteine is, a, is an inflammatory marker, and they often will do that to see if you have risk for a heart attack. But I always include it in my blood labs because of the inflammation from lipedema. Gotcha. So you were on a live event with our wonderful Patty Cornute of Lipedema Fitness. And when you were telling me about it, Patty, your whole face lit up. What you talk about? <laughs> Asha. <laughs> we uh we both seem to be on a parallel path and uh she got to go do a lot more fun stuff recently um with a, pe a few people that i had um seen on the what is it uh fascia and chronic pain uh summit which happens i think it's every october that you can sign up for it it's free they have a lot of webinars that are that are going on and it's where i saw gil headley and you know, that whole story and got us all together with uh, Dr. Herbs, which was my hugest goal and still can't believe that that happened. But um, yeah, she's so, Linda Ann just brings such a lightness and education and joy and care and it just all rolls into one and you can watch it. It's it's on the, the replay video section of the Instagram for Lipedema Fitness and she talks all about fascia and about the vagus nerve and taught us some more about the exercises that we learned at FBRS and breathing, breathing. I've been working on my breathing so much since that, since that live, I do it while I'm vibrate on my vibration plate. 
And then That's since awesome. I was on that live, I got to attend a two-day class on the fascia. And after class, we went down, we worked with live, not live, we worked with cadavers. So and I got to see the skin, which is so thin, the superficial adipose tissue, which is the sat, the superficial fascia, which is just below that, and then the dat, which is the deep adipose tissue, and then the deep fascia. And now when I'm doing my work and I'm doing my myofascial work and I'm sinking in, I, I'm visualizing, I know exactly what I'm doing now. It's unbelievable to see. And did you know the tendons and the ligaments are part of the fascia? So I want to segue too into, you have a visual, Patty. I do. Dun, 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 dun. Is it upside down? <laughs> tell us tell us all and how can people still plug into this amazing event this is what how many years this is our eighth annual event it's international we have people participating from all over the world it's a virtual event so obviously we all participate on june 24th is the uh the actual go live date for the lipedema triathlon and it was created I wanted to do an event that I could focus on that benefited lipedema and help spread awareness for lipedema. And I couldn't find one. So I said, so she I'm created one. And so many years later, we're, we're doing it. And Lympha Press and Juzo both sponsor shirts and water bottles. And for us here locally, the Saratoga Regional YMCA hosts us every year. So they close down swim lanes for the swim wow. and they save uh bikes for us and treadmills and it's just really fantastic and everybody who participates all takes pictures and on that day we're sharing online and talking all about what we're doing and people who never in a million years thought they would do a triathlon will participate and it just it is so empowering and it definitely spreads awareness for lipedema but also the importance of staying active when you have lipedema so yay yeah so are they are you out of shirts we're done we're done <laughs> we, so people, within 19 it, hours all the sponsored shirts and water bottles were spoken for i went through a place i think it was the first 50 people um i placed those and then i just went through and did i think another 10 um and i'm wow. like scraping the bottom of the barrel At, after i'm done and everybody who was you know promised a shirt has gotten it i will then share the link if you want to go and buy a shirt you can do that um it's on zazzle so it's, it's inexpensive a lot of times like right now they're 30 percent off so they're pretty inexpensive but um yeah we're excited so oh uh, well and so are the chatters nita cluis wore her shirt yesterday to her new certified lymphedema therapist <laughs> office so aside from having an event that everybody can get behind and we're so excited about it the takeaways are advertisements for a condition that people need to know more about and that's what we are all about absolutely one thing that really struck me in chat too is so many and jen thank you for bringing this up jen sefton of who i got to meet in person at fdrs with ellers danlos many of the people that are in attendance tonight had to wear braces on their legs as a child. And what a memory. And I was thinking about what you said, Susie, about having four children. And I'm thinking about how amazing it is and people participating in your Lipedema Fitness Triathlon and all the adventures that you have PGP and people living life and being moms and partners and I'm going somewhere with this, which is honoring what your body has done and can do in spite of all the challenges you face. And I really want to honor each of you for that. And I want you to put in chat and I want you to think about something that you're grateful for that your body does, because I, I heard that grat gratitude and sadness can't coexist. 
And we all face sadness. You know, we just had Mother's Day and Mother's Day is a trigger for some of us, right, PGP? You know, those, Angelique, you just also lost your mom recently. There's so many of us that have suffered loss and you know, you've got all these feelings. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. And what I have learned is I need to be honest about my feelings and feel them and let them out, but wherever possible to marinate in gratitude. Go ahead, PGP. With, I thought of this with the whole uh, hypermobility and allergies and the braces comment made me think of braces for the mouth. And there has been several studies of us having issues with our teeth because of them not staying in place. Like my, I had braces as a kid, but mine have shifted again. They don't stay in place. I had to have expanders, which is the mouthpiece with the key to make your mouth bigger. Because I was told as a child, I had a small mouth, which my family always joked about because I was the loud mouth and the big mouth in the family. But um, they had to pull six of my baby teeth at once because while they were loose, my teeth were so crowded that they wouldn't let it fall out. So they had to pull them and then put the expanders in and push mm -hmm. to shape because my mouth kept like moving on its own and they had no idea why they couldn't give me an answer but there's been studies now that there is the flexibility in like the jaw and the keeping the teeth and everything in place and so it's another issue and I bring I like to bring it up because I get comments on my teeth all the time on my Instagram it is one of the troll comments um, people used to really attack my size, but then since I've gone down with surgery or they look at my page and see before and afters and see that I'm working on myself, they've backed off of the like typical fat comments and they go for my teeth and they all the time. And between the shaping of them and how they like move easily on their own. And then with celiac disease, I like my enamels destroyed. So the coloring is off, but I mean, I don't care, but <laughs> yeah. So it is something that it was an issue my whole childhood. I mean, really bad, like teeth yeah. overlapping. Like I had really bad teeth. Like I should pull up a picture and share it one of these days that they were worse than they are now. Got really nice and straight and then got slightly, I have one that sinks back a little bit, but it's something that is common. I mean, there's quite a few of us that have had it. I've talked to a couple others that have had the same kind of dental issues growing up. And it's something that links together because it's just the sturdiness is not there. Lots of people are saying they had no idea that the dental issues were involved. And thank you for your candor in bringing it up. My lead in was <laughs> about acknowledging that despite all of our challenges, what our body can do, I think your triathlon patty is a great example of saying okay i am challenged but just like what jen said at the fdrs conference i have done this this and this and it hasn't worked yet but 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 i press on so i always love to i mean we are running into 15 minutes uh left in this program i want us to think about uh, some uplifting, positive things that we can share with our audience, but not fake, because I love that we're honest and it's tough and it's challenging. And even if you don't have lipedema, life itself presents a host of challenges and looking for ways to be grateful. They say, PGP, that your level of confidence should be bottled and sold. It took no. <laughs> years to get to this point. It was not always this way. And I don't know if it's, if it's confidence or if it's just I've given up caring what people say. And it's, mm. it's, no fucks given. I, like, I just don't know which it is. It, maybe yeah. it, it goes back and forth. But I think I'm just truly happy right now. Like, And that's just kind of, I think, what it comes across more like well, and I think that's a great point too, that you did, you weren't just hatched full of confidence and you used to say oh. that you did not have a resting <laughs> smiling face. 
No, I have a threatening <laughs> bitch face all the time. In fact, it would be pretty funny to go back and see our original videos that we did. Yeah. And see your face and how it has changed because your joy level has changed over the yeah. years. And mm -hmm. actually, you know, we, our path just continues to get brighter, even though we go through some dark times too. So it's, you're an inspiration. All of you are, all of you are. Okay. So what haven't we talked about that needs to, somebody asked, what's a rebounder? See, we say these terms, we're used to them, but not everybody is familiar with who wants to tell us what a rebounder is. Go ahead, Cheryl. Sure. I can. Uh, a rebounder is like a mini trampoline. Um, and so, uh, it, it's just like a, a personal sized one. Um, so they're relatively cheap and it's a real easy exercise to start to get into. Um, it, it's a great thing because it helps to move the lymph. Um, and so you can just kind of bounce on it. There's even a real small one. And I can't think, I, I think it has a slightly different name that you can put under your desk at work. And so you can just bounce your feet on it as you're sitting at your desk at work. I've been using one for the last 23 days now, I think it is. And I have noticed reduced swelling, um, better like flow overall, more energy. Um, I listed a whole bunch of stuff on a reel I did the other day, but I've been showcasing the rebounder a lot the last 20 mm -hmm. days in my Instagram. And it's actually movement that I enjoy, which I never thought I would find um, because I've got trauma with movement from my past and stuff like that. But I put on like uh, this last week has been 2000s hip hop that I've been bouncing to and just put on music. And it's 2000 hip hop is like really good for bouncing to. <laughs> it's like really good beats to just kind of bounce um, and I've been working with Bellicon. That's like the company that I have and been working with. They are in July releasing a whole lymph um, like library of lipedema and lymphedema like bounce exercises, I guess, for like use on the rebounder. So they're working with it. And they and did recommend that like bungees versus springs if you're getting a rebounder springs are gentler on the joints on the bounce back or like coming back down from the bounce than springs are um, i have noticed that my hypermobile knee has gotten stronger and better using the rebounder and doesn't pop out as much excellent and so susie you put a comment in chat that i think yeah. everybody should hear go ahead I just wanted to interject on that because one of the things is when you use the hard spring ones, especially with having hypermobile joints, every time you come down, it's such an intense impact. You might as well just jump up and down on concrete, to be honest with you. And it can really um, actually damage your knees and stuff like that. But the what she's talking about with the Bellicon, where it's got the, the like the bungees, but it's specifically designed. The Bellicon is is spendy, but it's but it was it's also even endorsed by NASA because it is so gentle on all of the joints. It actually works every muscle in the body, and you can bounce as gently as you want to. Also, so I'm also um, wanting to look into getting that myself. And I, I researched it a couple of years ago. And then I had a doctor who was like, I don't like the rebounders because you're bouncing everything around. Um, but I don't think that's true of the Bellicon where he was talking about, you know, sometimes where you hit and it's a bit hard. And then you're like, all of your insides are like flip flopping around, especially mm -hmm. with us being so loosey goosey on the inside too. The Bellicon's been super gentle on the like I'm I'm still 3:30 and I'm I bounce on it some days, and like I said, it has not hurt my knee or my back at all, and I it I don't feel like I'm sinking through it or gonna pop down through it. It's very, um, and the weight limit on the Bellicon goes up to 441, so it does hold higher. I did just link a cheaper Amazon bungee one, um. I haven't used it, so I don't know how it is, but it is a bungee one that is lower price range than Bellicons. And it's a perfect time for me to say that we are not advising anyone to go out and get one, and we're not telling you to jump on it. <laughs> we do highly recommend 
hip hop music from the 2000s though. <laughs> that we can say <laughs> with confidence, but um, always listen to your body, listen to your medical professional and your team. What works for one may not work for everyone. We always say that it's our regular disclaimer. This is all about sharing and we appreciate you sharing your experience. Absolutely. There was a lot of interest in that. Linda, Ann, did you want to add something? I did. I wanted to just say that there is a handle that goes with it. And I recommend patients, people with Lippy to get the handle because you don't have to be jumping up and down. Just bouncing can do wonderful things. And you can also do, you know, squat down and move your legs. So get it with the handle. Okay, go ahead, Patty. And if you don't have a rebounder, you can use a large yoga ball and bounce on that. Gentle bouncing on that as well. Gentle bouncing. And what is the bouncing doing? Physiologically? Moving your lymphatics. Moving lymph. And moving the lymphatics is so important. That's why, you know, we recommend also under your doctor's, of course, you need a doctor's <laughs> prescription for the lympha press. You know, little lymph angions, each lymph vessel has lymph angions around it, which are little muscle pumps. And we pressure and release. And when you do that, then the lymph moves. And with the deep breathing also helps to move the lymph. Excellent. And of course, the lymphopress press helps move the lymph. If you want to find out more about lymphopress, press, feel free to shoot us an email at marketing at lymphopress.com. While we have you, Cheryl, and you know, you always have an open invitation. We love you and appreciate you. Lori Pelnitz wants to know, how much have you seen your food sensitivities change since you began tracking them? completely different from when I first started. So currently my sensitivities are oatmeal. What are they? Oh my. <laughs> uh, uh, what are they? Darn. Uh, um, oh, I can't well, they, remember. They've improved so much she can't even remember them, it, which is it, a good it, thing. It is true. It, it's completely different from before. Um, I am staying away from dairy, um, but I'm able to eat eggs again, which I, I couldn't originally. Um, I'm able to eat wheat. Um, I'm able to eat um, uh, squash. I, I couldn't eat squash for a while. So it, it's completely different from when I first started. Yeah, gotcha. We also will never forget your story about the scallop. That over I haven't tried scallops you, again. I, yeah, I do have five to admit, pounds yeah, overnight, it, five pounds. Five from pounds, one scallop, one scallop. One scallop. Crazy. Yep. Is there a better time of the day to use your rebounder or vibration plate? Or is I it my first it thing in the morning? No. No. Okay. No. No. I, I start out and I end the day with it. So. Okay. Again. Whatever works for you, wherever you can fit it in, it sometimes can feel like a part-time job taking care of yourself. But please do take care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. By the way, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. Lympha Press has a whole page on its website, Mental Health Resources for Patients. And the National Alliance for Mental Illness helped us worked with us to create that page feel free to go there if you're feeling blue or down or challenged whatever we never want you to feel alone we're here for you and we also want to encourage you so with that we've got just a few minutes left and I'm going to go around the table for some encouragement and Susie first of all I really honor you for having four kids you are one fierce mama well, we didn't have a TV, so. <laughs> well, there you go. It's good. What would you like to leave our audience with tonight? And by the way, anybody in chat, feel free to encourage us because we could all use it too. The one thing, that, the only thing that I would like to say, um, one, this community is so beautiful. There's so many people going through various different challenges. And I, I really love you know, it's not all or nothing, it's something or nothing. And of course that comes from the wonderful Patty. And even when things get tough, I 
no matter how busy it gets, I work on the next right thing, whatever that is. And mm -hmm. I just get it done. And I feel accomplished, even if it's just one thing, but, um, those one things that we keep doing add up, I think. And then you have this community to tell you, you did good. Even when you feel like you didn't <laughs> love it. Beautiful. I'm so glad you said that. Patty, what about you? By the way, don't you have a birthday coming up? Yes, I do. Wow, that is coming up. <laughs> June and, 5th. June 5th. And Lippy Butterfly, when is your birthday? It is next Saturday, May 27th. So I collected Ooh. happy birthday to you both. Nobody else's birthday is coming up, is it, that I don't know about? Okay, good. Leave us with inspiration, Patty. You know, taking action does so much for you emotionally as well as physically. Even like Susie said, if it's if it's one thing, if it's just one thing that you can do, it really becomes like a snowball effect. And it can change your whole outlook of a just brutal day. Put a song on that you love and just try, if you're sitting, if you can stand, if you can dance, just dance to the song. Just give yourself a break from the yuck give yourself a break from the yuck i love it cheryl scolage drop some inspiration on us well i i'm just always amazed at our community and how outgoing everyone is um it, and so even the the people in, in chat I, I mean just what 10 20 years ago we did we just froze you just froze on a cheryl of all times to froze <laughs> to freeze can you say that again i, I can try <laughs> so i i love this community and uh all of you in chat um you know 10 20 years ago we didn't have a community like this so you know use us reach out to us find your person to confide in and and uh you know, we're all here for you. Beautiful. Well said, and welcome back. We did miss you. We love you. We treasure you. And like we said, you always have a, a seat at our round table. Oh, I love you. Linda Ann, Linda Ann. My message is to move. And when you think of the fascia, the fascia needs to be gliding and moving together. So whether you're going on the rebounder, whether you're going on the vibration plate, whether you're just walking, whether you're just standing at a walker and bending your legs, move. It Keep moving and breathe while you're doing that. You know what? And that is so good for your mental health too, because I find the days that I just say, ah, and I don't move it creates the co it, the cobwebs grow up here between my ears. Thank you for that reminder. Lippy butterfly. I hate to sound like a broken record, but we're on a theme tonight and it just happens to be what, what's going on. Um, I went back to talking to Kelly Maynard, our friend, um, my nutritionist um, that had been helping me along the way. Um, you guys know I've gotten off track really bad. Life really slammed me so badly. Um, but in talking to her, she reminded me that I got to where I was at by just simple baby steps, like just doing small modifications to my life. And so like if things are all the way off track and I'm wanting to do all of the things again, all of the 50,000 things that we do for our bodies again, the best way to get back there is to just take small baby steps back there. Because trying to like take on that whole enchilada, it's overwhelming. It is, uh, it like, it actually makes me tense up even more and then I get absolutely nothing done. So I had a small little goal of like changing out two meals and increasing my water. And in that, it inspired me to make my own body scrub that actually, I think it actually helped me to move my lymph last week. And I feel a little bit better. I don't feel great. And I don't feel where I was at before, but I feel better in knowing that I accomplished my small goals last week. And I'm on a path to getting back to taking care of my lippy. So 
do the small things. They'll add up. Small things add up. Great advice. Love it. PGP. Um, mine is just keep speaking up for yourself. I would rather be told, oh, you research too much online. Oh, you think you know it all. Oh, just shut up. I would rather be told that and finally get somebody that listens to me so I can get the results I need than be like, oh, okay. So just keep talking up. You know your body. Just keep speaking up. Excellent. Our friend Heba, who was one of our special guest panelists last month, she's out there. We appreciate you, Heba. Rashonda Dolberry, she's out there tonight. She was recently <laughs> diagnosed with lipolymphedema and she has lipedema and so many new names. This community is growing and it is a joy and a privilege to share this time with you every month. The third Wednesday of every month, we will be here. Jen Sefton said it best in chat. I love you all. So I was talking to a therapist recently because, yeah, yeah. And she said, let it in. When something good happens, when you feel something good, when there is love, let it in. So I say to all of you tonight, let it in. Let it in. Let it touch your heart. And please know it's genuine. We hope to see you next month. And we hope to see you at the upcoming webinars and so many fun things. Happiest of birthdays, Lippy Butterfly and Patty Cornute. To everyone, thank you for honoring us with your time tonight. You're the best. We'll see you next month. Bye. Thank you.